Okay, so this question is um, about gluten-free and sugar-free treats. So this is definitely a question for both of you. Have you any ideas, recipe ideas, for gluten-free and sugar-free treats? Now, first of all, Kylie, gluten-free, sugar-free, why do we, do we need to go gluten-free? Do we need to go sugar-free? I know these are the, like the two enemies that we kind of hear about in the press and gluten-free diets, sugar-free diets. Um, what's your opinion on all that? So to start off by saying some people have had huge or seen huge successes in, in terms of following a gluten-free or a sugar-free diet. Um, the reasons behind those are often because they cut out foods that previously made them feel not that great. So brownies, sugary treats in general, sugary snacks in general. Um, so I don't want to undermine um, anybody's experience with following these two diets. They can certainly improve uh, people's health overall. However, with gluten-free, um, about 1% of the UK population is celiac or has celiac disease, um, which is a diagnosable condition where you go to a GP, you get a blood test, and they can tell if you are uh, celiac or not celiac. It's important not to cut out gluten before you go and have that test, just in case you're thinking right. of having that test, yeah. so they need to be able to pick it up. Um, another possibly 1% of the popula population has uh, this uh, non-celiac gluten sensitivity, which means you're a bit sensitive to gluten, but you haven't sort of crossed the threshold into tr sort of true celiac disease. If you don't fall into those two categories, there is absolutely no reason whatsoever to go gluten-free. Okay. So if what people find is when they go gluten-free, more in the old days than now, because there are so many gluten-free options available now, mm. which is great for celiacs, uh, but actually if, a, if you have a brownie and you have a gluten-free brownie, they are exactly the same. In the past, people, when they cut out gluten, would also likely cut out cakes, pastries, um, brownies, all of those sorts of things, yeah. which yeah. meant that overall they felt better, uh, because those mm. things would used to make not feel as good and potentially make them overeat. Um, and so by cutting gluten out, they actually didn't cut out any so magic. This, so, right, around this question, and we are going to get to your treats in a minute, <laughs> yeah. I promise you. But I just, I, this is a really interesting topic because it's so popular at the moment and we're talking about gluten-free. And I know, okay, when I don't have crappy bread, basically, I feel so much better. Um, so if I stick to like your rye tartlets there, if I stick to rye breads and, and um, gluten-free, mm -hmm. um, I definitely feel less bloated, I feel a lot better, um, and my system, should we say, seems to work a bit better. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so I feel better not having some of those kind of, not eating things like pastas and stuff like that. Why do I feel better? Um, there could be a number of reasons for that, and actually one of them is called a nocebo effect. So you've probably all heard of the placebo effect, yeah. um, and are familiar with that. And you, um, the nocebo effect is the opposite. So when you cut out something, or when you don't have something, you um, are aware that you're, you've cut it out, and actually you can tell yourself you feel better. Mm. And it's, it's incredibly powerful. This isn't to undermine you in any way. Yeah. It's a no, very, no. very powerful yeah. effect. Okay, so um, it could be, but could it be, because when I say crappy bread, I mean like not good quality bread. Mm. So if I have like, you know, homemade, so there's a cafe near us where they make their own sourdough bread and it's delicious. And if I have that, I don't see it. So, so could it be down to the quality of the flour, the, the way it's produced, the fact that it hasn't got loads of preservatives, all it, that kind of it stuff? Could be. Mm. It could It's unlikely you're eating that especially knowing you it's unlikely that you're eating that much bread for the slight changes in the ingredients to be yeah. overall but it, it might just be that you're ultimately making better choices uh you know how are you eating it are you more relaxed when you're eating it are you mm -hmm. shoving shoving in your gluten um sandwich really really quickly or are you more react more yeah. you know relaxed you're having a nice time at gales um are we allowed to name drop <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, sorry, it, we're not, it's not the BBC. So, yeah. um, but, okay. but the other thing is, it's all very well for me to sit here and say, you know, it's a nocebo effect, it doesn't do anything. Um, firstly, that might not be true. You might be a, a part of the small percentage of the population that does um, feel better without gluten. And it doesn't really matter what I say. If it makes you feel better, then you should go with that. If you prefer, mm. um, you know, the fresh, the homemade sourdough, and, and I mean, fantastic, that's a wonderful experience, it's, and go with it. It's yeah. about what it's works about for you. It's about adding variety as well, yeah. isn't it? Um, but the one thing you said I just wanted to pick up um, in terms of how it made you um, 
feel in, in yes. terms of how things worked and moved through your system. Something that we need to be a little bit careful of on a gluten-free diet is often people are cutting out some quite big sources of fiber. So, yeah. when, so pasta, poor pasta, poor bread, they get a bit of a hard time, um, but actually they are a quite a big source of fiber. Yeah. Um, and for some people, when you're cutting out gluten, if, if I had a gluten-free client, my main concern would be, are you getting enough fiber? And something to just be very aware of. So this goes down to the no carb dieting as well, doesn't it? it Which does. we haven't actually had a question on this, no. and I'm I'm surprised we haven't. But let's just very quickly delve into that. I know it's another huge big subject, and Katie's dying to come in here with her <laughs> gluten free and sugar free snacks. Um, but let's just very quickly do do this one, because from from again from a sports scientist perspective, I just cannot you know contemplate the idea of carb free. It just doesn't make any yeah. sense to me whatsoever. Um, so what's your opinion on carb-free diets? Should we be doing it? Should we not be doing it? <clears throat> Why not? It depends a little bit on the person. So, so like you say, um, you know, I've had some runners who um, feel very strongly that keto diets, so a very high fat, moderate protein diet, um, actually improves their performance. Uh, that's not what the science says by any means, and um, very few people would, would recommend that. But mm. you know, if, it help, if you think it helps you feel better, then, then great. Um, so, and keto diets are what people tend to talk about when they're talking about very, very low carb diets. Again, from a fiber point of view, you're missing out on so, so much if you are um, not eating carbohydrates. We tend to demonize this food group, but, um, and Katie, I know you've heard me say this um, before, but when people think about uh, carbohydrate containing foods, you know, they're thinking about cakes, they're thinking about um, McDonald's, I think, you know, sort of. Yes, yeah, fast, fast sort of foods fast basically. food yeah. can be quite yeah. but actually it's the carbohydrate fat combination that make those foods really yeah. delicious and highly calorific yeah. it's actually not carbohydrates themselves you know sweet potatoes mm. uh, rice beans chickpeas all of those have a huge carbohydrate mm. co um, content and what I said before about fiber we should be eating more of these foods we should be encouraging these foods into our diets not cutting them out um, so it always will depend a little bit on the person uh, and you're absolutely right from an athletic performance um carbohydrate is the primary yeah. fuel source of the brain it's so important that's for that's the point that i always say to people yeah. you need it for your brain yeah. you, your brain needs carbohydrates <laughs> yeah. so, so really important yeah. to think about but you know we could go down this route we could do a whole thick series on this about carbs and you know portion sizes because that's what it leads down to as yeah. well and, and some people just find you know yeah. low carbohydrate diets help them keep their calories under control and and that's fine yeah. too as long as you're aware of what you're taking out you can then replace it with something it's something so we um, need to keep so if we're going gluten-free you've got to replace it with an alternative what would be your alternative Katie? so i've had a few clients ask me for sort of gluten-free ideas or things like that on their platters and i do use quite a lot of oats so i'll buy gluten-free oats um, and I've got some nice recipes for little sort of oaty biscuits. So gluten-free oats with maybe coconut, maple syrup, that kind of thing, or using nut butters and nuts in them. So nice sort of sweet kind of nutty oat cakes, that kind of thing. Sometimes I might dip them in a little bit of chocolate or you can sandwich them together with a nut butter or a little bit of chocolate or something like that. So yeah, I definitely think that sort of gluten-free oats and you know, that, that yeah. works well. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Hello, I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did enjoy it, please do subscribe to our channel and comment and like on the video so that we can continue to provide you with lots of free content.